Hello everyone, welcome back to the final part of this series. I think this is the most awaited part in any creative coding tutorial, the interactivity part. In this video, we will translate the point and path classes from a previous processing tutorial into P5.js to add interactivity to the text, or any path really. To start, we'll need to translate the point class from this tutorial. This class extends the P5 vector and takes in a sketch reference and an X and Y for position as parameters in its constructor. Since it extends another class in P5.js, we'll need to call the super method with appropriate arguments, as in what the original class requires. Here, it's the X and Y position. We'll then create a display and update method as per usual. In the display method, we'll draw a circle for the point. Seeing that we're using P5.js in instance mode and referring to the sketch inside the class, will encounter an annoying amount of repetition of this.s before any property or method from the p5.js library. To rectify that nuisance, we'll use the destructuring assignment, which is one of my favorite expressions in JavaScript. This will reduce the amount of times we're going to write this.s to simply s, just like in the main sketch. In the update method, I again use the destructuring assignment for the sketch reference, although we're not referring to the sketch many times here, so feel free to omit it if you like. Now set the method to take in two arguments, a current position vector and a target vector. If you have noticed since the beginning of the series, we haven't used any data type keywords for any parameters and variable definitions. Although I did specify that the two parameters are vectors, there's no way of knowing without looking at the entire code. A little confusing compared to processing, but somewhat more manageable. Next, add an acceleration variable that will subtract the target point from the current position using the p5 vector class. I also like to add local variables for the current position and target vectors and use those as the arguments for the acceleration assignment. This gives me how far pixel-wise a point moves from the initial position to the destination, aka current and target, or technically the distance between the two vectors on the x and y axes. To get the actual length of the line between the two vectors, we'll use the magnitude method. If you want to learn more about vectors, visit the Nature of Code website for detailed information, because it's much better if you understand vectors before you start this tutorial. Now, to move the text path and create the bubble effect, we'll need to figure out how far these points move based on our mouse's radius. We can check if the original magnitude or distance is less than the mouse's radius. Let's call it mouse range. Only then we can move the points to reach the edges of the mouse radius. Otherwise, stay where you are. To move the points, we set the magnitude of the acceleration vector to a new one and move the position by that acceleration by adding the two vectors. The new magnitude is the mapping of the old distance from 0 to the mouse range, flipping it to the mouse range to 0. As in, if the distance between each point and the target vector, here the mouse, is 0, make it the full mouse range, stretching it outward. And if the distance is the full mouse range, there is no movement since we're already at the edge of the mouse's radius. Next, we'll move on to the path class from the same video I referenced before, and it will display the path and update the points as well. It takes in only two parameters in the constructor, the sketch reference and the array of points. Similar to the point class, create a display and update method. In the display method, start with the destructuring assignment for the sketch reference as we'll use it often here. Secondly, we'll replicate what we created in the previous video to display the points. You can simply move that loop from the main sketch file, adjusting it to the local variables in the path class. I chose to create a normal for loop instead of a for each for no important reason. I just use them interchangeably. So feel free to do whatever you think is appropriate here. In the update method, define one parameter, the target vector and loop through the two dimensions of the points array to call the points update method with each point's position and the past target position, which is going to be the mouse here. I keep referencing that the target vector is the mouse here because in the reference sketch for fluff, I am not necessarily using the mouse as the target. I'm just using different points from a smaller path as the target. So that's a little bit more complicated because I'm using multiple targets and it's going to have a little bit of differences in the way we set up our classes. Don't worry about that. Right now we only need the mouse. Finally, adjust the main sketch to use the path and point classes instead, following these five steps. 
One, create an empty path array variable at the top of the p5.js instance method to store the path object and a mouse variable. Two, instead of pushing an anonymous object into the temp point array, push a new point object passing in the sketch reference and the x and y positions from the path commands. Three, outside of the gpath commands loop, still inside the path group loop, push a new path object to the paths array with a sketch reference and the points array as its arguments. Four, at the end of the setup function, create a new mouse vector and draw and update all the paths in the array. Drawing the paths in the setup function first prevents a glitch when the draw method starts since we reset the background on every frame. 5. Set the mouse vector value to the mouse x and mouse y positions and duplicate the loop we created at the end of the setup method to display and update the paths. Next, run the sketch and enjoy. Talk to you soon. Bye!